All right, good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Um, I know summer evenings um, are sometimes, well, you got other things to do, and I get it. Little league games and all kinds of things going on in the summer, uh, keeping everyone busy. So I always appreciate when folks take the time to come here. And um, I don't want to waste your time tonight, but I want to do something a little bit differently. We, uh, the title was um, Market Review and Charts. Um, but, well, let me do a quick market review. Um, anything is possible tomorrow. How about that for a market review? We've got the SPY and QQQ at our near record highs. We've got the diamonds potentially showing downtrend, IWM in a downtrend. And if it weren't for big tech, the tech giants, we would have a very different market. So tomorrow we get um, a CPI number in the morning and we get an FOMC decision in the afternoon. And even on the CNBC website, they're saying expect that um, it could be a game changer tomorrow. There could be big moves in the market. Now, the question is, are they going to be up or down? And I think you could almost flip a coin. Um, it, it's, um, I would expect big percentage moves. And the implied volatility of the options on the index suggests some pretty big potential moves coming in the market. So, um, your guess is as good as mine. Hopefully you're protected because the CPI number comes out before the bell and you are ready for the day. I took some profits today and actually hedged um, another position today, just um, trying to prepare and um, have not wanted to be a buyer um, the last couple of days waiting for this because I have no edge in doing it. So what I wanted there, so there's your market review. Um, if what I wanted to do tonight is you guys see me often talk about the technical analysis that I do, chart reading, and you hear me say every morning, let's take a look at the charts for what they are, not for what we want them to be. Try to set aside our bias and really take a look at the chart. And um, you see me do that all the time, but one of the things we haven't done for a long time is for you to suggest charts that are important to you. Because oftentimes when um, someone else takes a look at a chart that's important to you, you learn more from that. I know I did when I was learning uh, trading. Um, there were things that I would miss, and it was things that I would miss not because um, I didn't know better, but it was because I was looking at the chart through a lens of this has to be a buy, this has to be a sell, um, something along those lines, and there were things that I missed in the chart. So if you guys have any charts that you'd like me to cover, um, oh yeah, Kev, pretty hard to beat some of Bob Seger, yeah some good music. So if you guys have a chart that you'd like me to talk about, post it here. Um, now, I'm not going to suggest that anything is a buy tomorrow or a sell tomorrow uh, because of the that data. Um, but um, we can certainly take a look and um, try to evaluate some charts. So let's take a look at TM. And you're looking for um, resistance in this chart, Mark? Well, first off, the, one of the first things I see is, of course, this downtrend. Um, downtrend is still here in play on that chart. So we would want to call this resistance as well um, in, in that chart. We're coming into right now a little bit of a price support area. And so consequently, the next resistance 
to the upside in the chart is going to be right there. Um, that's where I would see it. That's where I would place it. Um, any rally back up to there is where I would be concerned watching for more downside move in that chart. Okay. Now, if we pull this back a little bit further, check that out. Isn't it amazing how charts, if we just take the time to look, they give us really good, um, gives us really good data. Oh, support. Okay, sure. So I would say this little platform right here is showing us that support. And then if you look across over here, it's actually even corresponding to something all the way back in early 2022 for a potential support area. So look for this gap to be filled here in the chart. And remember, support and resistance isn't something that is a pencil thin line. It really should be a very wide line. You could have you could have the stock make contact here, but still travel on through to test the underneath side of that before it actually stops and bounces. That's how those tails get occurred um, occur in the market all the time. They push through those areas, they sweep out stop losses, and then they reverse. So remember, this is an area, not a finite line in the chart, but that's where I would be looking for first right now for that level of support. And then, you know, if I'm to draw this up, the next place is going to be underneath this area, right about there, and then right down here. Three next levels of support down. Um, NVIDIA. <clears throat> NVIDIA. <clears throat> First off, we've got a strong upside trend here in this chart. So short term, we have even made that trend even sharper. Okay. So we've got a trend support in here, and the price support of this chart, in my opinion, is going to be right here. Okay. So just kind of keeping in mind on these two trends in the chart, one of the things we want to pay attention to that oftentimes a short term trend will pass that area in consolidation and will come to the longer term trend. Now, sometimes that's just a long term consolidation. Sometimes we actually make a dip down to find that area of support. OK, so if this doesn't take off here soon, don't be too surprised to see this seeking that next area in the chart or the trend somewhere in here. It could chop for a long period of time. Take note of this. Okay, When we go steep to an upside move, and notice we, we had a trend here, and then we steepened it. Okay, And we ended up locked in a range for a long period of time to rest out that pattern. So when you take an extension and really stretch it up, sometimes we have to consolidate that longer and you'll want to be looking for that longer term area here in the trend and you can see that longer term area and even past that. If we go back even further, we can probably find a trend in here that the longest term of this, I'm going to go back even further. There we go. Come back into here. Come up there. Check it out. Isn't that amazing? When we look at the chart, the chart is trying to give us clues. And we can find a lot of detail and data in there. So is it even possible with those two trends that I drew up here that maybe this time this chart in NVIDIA is going to have to come all the way out to this trend? Certainly possible, and it's shown the capability of doing that. Okay, and if you have any additional questions on those, please feel free to ask. Um, Anet. <clears throat> Anet, nice little pop up here today. 
if I were drawing this right now, it would look something like this. There's my upside trend. That's a good connection to that trend. There's my support. The problem is there is a pretty strong resistance. So when I look at this chart, I look at this chart and I make the question, you know, if if I have to have a stop loss down here to protect this trade off of support and I enter this trade here, how am I going to deal with this trade if it just pops into there and then comes back? And is it worth the risk? So that would be one of my first concerns on that trade is will this resistance be too prove to be too strong or can we pop on through and honestly I think if you wanted to enter this trade the entry into this trade was right here the break of that consolidation that gets you the low risk entry and makes that trade palatable at this point it's what I call a chase I waited too long, waited for too much confirmation. And I'll tell you, that was one of my biggest problems in trading for years and years and years. I struggled with this. I would wait too long to enter the trade, catch the position, and catch the almost the immediate pullback. And because my stop was so far away, I was not able to hold to the stop loss Consequently, I created my own my own loss. The chart was telling me there's a problem here. I just didn't do the work. And I ended up stopping myself out at a pretty sizable loss because I chased the stock higher. The other thing that I would tell you in this trade when we go to a 3-8 trap uh, chart, this is what I call a crossover trade when the price just crosses over. We need proof once we cross over that this is going to hold. That gives me a lower risk entry into the trade and a better opportunity, okay? a higher probability trade. Too many times you'll catch the crossover and then they fail. Okay, Make it prove that it can hold that higher low because that's what begins or resumes an upside trend. Because if you look at this chart right now, this was officially in a downtrend until this crossover. Now we need proof that we can hold. If that holds the higher low, we've got an upside trend. If it pops up here, reverses and fails, and there's lots of examples of that. Here's one of them right here. The stop loss would be too great and people couldn't handle the, the um, stop loss and they would end up creating their own loss in the trade. So that would be my major concern with ANET at the moment. Um, shop. Shopify, a great stretch to the upside. Uh, this stock coming up out of a bottom, this is um, something we're seeing a lot nowadays. Um, didn't realize I had some lines already on here, but we're seeing stocks that run and don't stop running and don't pull back. And it's a hard thing to watch sometimes because you just want to be in it. But what I would tell you in shop right now, to me, this is closer to a potential short than it is a long. We have a downtrend here. We have a downtrend here. We have a price resistance here and a price resistance here. It is possible this could continue to extend straight on up to fill the gap. But I would be watching this for that next potential failure. Now, when I say failure, it doesn't mean it comes all the way back down to here. What I'm talking about, there's that crossover. Okay? Make that crossover prove that it can hold. Then find your entry into the trade. A rule of thumb that I use in my charting, and guys, let me know if this is making any sense to you. 
Um, but a rule of thumb that I use in my trading, any stock that's up more than five to seven days in a row, I'm expecting a pullback. Okay, and that's normal in the market. What we've seen here lately was such a big bull rush and so much speculation right now, we get this chase going on. But unfortunately, those chase moves <clears throat> can often end really badly. Okay, so make sure you wait for that proof of the higher low because that's what actually starts an uptrend. Not the rush to the upside. It's the consolidation or the pullback to find a support that makes the higher low and that develops the upside trend. Okay, there cannot be an upside trend until that occurs. Okay, so I would honestly be watching this for a potential short. And by the way, guys, you're not putting in there whether you want them long or short. Um, so please understand, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you as I see it. And if you don't like that analysis, that's cool. I, I get it. But hopefully you get something out of it and you'll see something in that chart that you hadn't seen before. And um, it can help you um, do a better job in getting higher probability trades. Okay. Eat on the watch list. Eat. <clears throat> big, big stretching run here in Eat to the upside. Um, beautiful move. There were opportunities to buy into this trade. Now coming back, looks like we're going to seek out some support somewhere right here. I'm going to put a range on this because this was such a strong move. Somewhere in here we might catch that pullback support. If we look across over here, we can see why we ran into this resistance and why we're getting this pullback. We bumped into a, a big multi-year high. And now we're trying to figure out whether or not we can actually maintain these prices. So what we need to see in this chart, and by the way, that trend, not likely that can continue to extend. When you get straight up parabolic moves like that, pull the chart back, look for the bigger trend. You could easily see this chart come all the way back to here or work its way over to here in that trend. Okay. <clears throat> Here's the other challenge on this trade. Notice that the three is now crossed down through the eight. Okay. We find short trades the same way we find long trades, and that's when this crosses down. Any rally back that doesn't make a new high sets up that potential lower high failure and additional pullback. Make sense? <clears throat> so watch that chart carefully. Um, before I'd want to get long this trade at all, this needs to cross back up and prove to hold and reestablish an uptrend. Oh, yeah. You're right. Um, that's what I would be um, at this point because three's below the eight. We could cross down and fail. So if you're thinking short, you're right in my wheelhouse that's what I would be looking for here watch this area of price support in the chart and if that fails you're golden because you have that chance that you could come all the way back down to here uh, Canva Um, beautiful potential trade setup, um, holding support, holding trend. 
Um, I'm not sure if I looked at this today, um, but you can see these drawings are coming in here pretty recently on that chart. I think there is a possible long setting up in here. Um, give it a little bit more time. This is a classic little descending triangle here. Give it a little bit of time and see if it can pop out of there and then I would be really interested in that chart. Now looking at targets up here notice that there is blue sky up here. If we can pop through this resistance here you've got blue sky above and then also recognize that it is possible the longer term trend could come into play here after such a strong rally. So if it doesn't pop here immediately, be patient with it because it may come back into here before it goes. Just be patient with it, wait for it. Gold. Gold has been working its way downhill pretty quickly here. Um, and tomorrow could be a big day. One of the things that has been driving gold prices is the, is the price of the dollar. And this is UUP. The price of the dollar has been zooming up. Anytime the dollar gets stronger, gold, silver, commodities of any kind typically sell off because it takes fewer dollars to buy the same product. Okay, so, um, and how does the dollar change in strength? The dollar changes in strength by interest rates, right? When rates go higher, dollar gets stronger. Okay, costs more for dollars. Right? Tomorrow we're going to find out from the FOMC. I don't think nobody expects them to raise rates, but they could easily say no rate increases until next year or rate cuts until next year. The market has, has originally been expecting six rate cuts. They said maybe three uh, two months ago, maybe three at this year. And now we've got new data that says, well, that's not good. And so it's possible they could say, no, one chance, two chances. And in that situation, if the dollar strengthens, look for gold to continue to fall. Now, the opposite is true. OK, if we get some good news from the Fed tomorrow, if the CPI number supports the Fed in cutting rates, I still don't believe the Fed is going to cut rates, but they may become they may come out and sound a bit more dovish. Maybe they leave on this idea that there's still a possible three rate cuts this year. Okay. And in that circumstance, I would look for gold to move up because the dollar will fall hard. Does that make sense, Daryl? So gold is definitely in a downtrend. It's in a down channel. It's broken support levels in the chart. Whoops. Broken support levels in the chart. Okay. We're testing this area in here, which again could be somewhere between here and here. You can see how that tail came through. That tail came through and went on down to test this level of support. And then we bounced. Okay. So if I wanted to take this short, I need this to rally back up. I need this to push back up to give me that lower risk entry into, the, into that short. So I can get my stop loss above that resistance area in the chart. Okay, but just remember tomorrow gold has the potential to move big because of the data that we're going to receive tomorrow. It's going to affect the currencies and could easily move big.
So be prepared. If you're already shorted, be prepared. Have a plan. Okay, if the if the Fed comes out dovish and the dollar falls, gold's going to rise. Ford. <clears throat> Ford is setting up a long, um, this is how I've got it drawn right now. Uh, breaking the downtrend, trying to hold that higher low, popped really good um, yesterday. Today pulled that back. Again, the whole market kind of pulled back here today, except for a few select tech stocks. Um, this is a good support. It's a really strong support in here. So I would still be watching this. If you're not already in it, I would be watching it for a, if we get good news tomorrow, a rebound back up in here. If you're already holding it, I would hold that trade till we break below, somewhere below that support area here in the chart. We confirm that we're breaking down. Okay, but right now, this is a very bullish setup for the chart. The first higher low after a downtrend break tends to be a very bullish move. Okay. Um, NVIDIA could go as low as 100. 100 would be a natural resistance or a, a natural support in the chart. Um, big round numbers are natural support and resistance levels. Um, I would say the way this looks, 100, if 100 doesn't stop it, it's coming a little bit further back, around 96. If 100 doesn't stop it, look for the gap to get filled here on a pullback. Right now, I really wouldn't be worried about that, though um, this is still very bullish and there's no sign of trend break in here um, at all. First trend I, I would be worried about right here. I, I'd be paying attention to this. If this trend breaks, then I would be watching this one. We want it to continue to hold the support levels here in the chart. So hold these areas in here. It can consolidate, it can chop around all at once, just hold support. Okay, but if it does start going, I think down below 100 is a likely place where it could reverse. <clears throat> now, please keep in mind, I don't know that that's true. I'm just reading the chart for as, it, as I see it, as it is, and I look at all the potentials. Okay. Not just what I want to see, what the chart is actually showing me. We could find support right here and just stay right here. We could find support here and just stay right here. We could find support at 100 and stay right there. Okay, But if this were to really get ugly, there's your big support level in the chart. Okay. SE, hope this is making some sense to you guys and being helpful. <clears throat> SE, I see it right now, nice rally up right at price resistance in the chart. You can see we've got other corresponding resistance here in that chart. So I would watch this carefully. We're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight days to the upside. I would expect a consolidation or a pullback doesn't have to fall. Notice we have this consolidation right in here. We maybe just consolidate here for a while, rest for a few days, find that bullish energy and push on through. Okay. So give it some time here. If it does go ahead and push on through, I would wait for it. Because oftentimes when we break through a resistance like this, we'll break through, then we'll pull back, find the support and trend, and that'll be your buy. Okay, because you don't want to catch that breakthrough that reverses and comes all the way back. You have really no good area to stop yourself out in that those price action candles. So probability wise, just give it some time. Consolidate over, find those buyers. 
break on through, rest back, find those buyers. Golden. Um, Hood. Hood's in a very, very bullish pattern right now. I've got it drawn up this way. It was talked about it the last couple of days as a potential. You can see that we popped up through. We're consolidating this move. And yesterday, when it popped up nicely, I suggested just give, give it some time. This may still come out here to trend. And the only reason I said that is because I, you know, yesterday was we're, we're waiting. We're waiting for the FOMC and the CPI. Today was the same. And so don't be too surprised if this has to wait for those data points to come out in that chart. Now, looking beyond that point, you can see over here, well, we've got some pretty good upside potential. We also see right, right there, there's that little teeny tiny resistance right there that we stopped at. So it's going to be really, really important on Robinhood um, as well. What happens with the dollar? We saw today um, crypto really took a, a heavy pullback. Strengthening dollar um, um, hurts gold, hurts crypto. So kind of keep an eye on that. But I do think this is a very bullish chart and potentially setting up. It's what I call a trap long. Just let that consolidate and rest this out. Okay, look for that next entry into the trade. By the way, I'm behind. So if you've said something um, or ask a question, I may not see it here for just a little bit um, because I'm way behind on the chat. So um, slow down on your on your um, uh, tickers because I don't know how many I'll get through, but, um, and some of you are, pu are putting multiples in there, so I don't know how many I'll get through here um, in this conversation. So I might want to pause on that until I catch up a little bit. RTX. RTX has been an incredibly bullish chart, and you can see this is the way I've got it drawn right now. What we're doing right now is we're pulling back. Um, uncertainty. This was a massive breakout, multi-year breakout in RTX. So it's not uncommon after that break that we may come back and test. Now we could test right here and hold and bounce from that point. Look for a little bit of follow through from today's candle to see if we can pop on through into uh, to that chart. But here again, I would not be surprised if it requires a little bit more rest. It's a very, very bullish chart. Um, and right now, I would just be waiting for the next entry um, into the trade. And perfectly fine if you entered here. I've got no problem with that. If you entered it already, stop loss underneath here in case you're wrong. In case it just can't make it and comes back down. Take a small risk on it. Um, but if it has to consolidate here a little bit more, I wouldn't be all that surprised. I mean, see here, this stock is commonly taking pretty nice rest. And after breaking through all time highs, a little rest might be due. Um, BSX, where would your stop be if long? Well, kind of all depends on where the entry was into the trade. Um, Right now, if I'm in this trade, we've got multiple days to the upside. I would probably be either taking profits on the trade, selling covered calls against it to protect um, the pullback in that um, chart. This is an extremely bullish chart. So I would be looking for a little rest or pullback that could occur here at any time. Um, so putting your stop in here, you notice that the only good place is underneath this support because all we've got is these candles stretching on higher. So you're going to have to decide how much risk can you take on the trade and place your stop. 
But one of the rules that I trade by, if I'm starting to worry about where my stop should be in a trade um, carry, I'm thinking it might be the time to just take profits. I make much more money taking profits while the stock is going up. Okay, while the stock is going up, taking profits rather than waiting for the pullback to occur. Because particularly if you're trading options, how many of you guys have ever had that trade? You got really good profit and then you get one black candle and half the profit's gone. Try not to get too greedy on a trade like that. If you can hold your stop here and you're willing to hold this a little bit longer, stop's got to be down under here, I think, to hold it a little bit longer. If that's acceptable, that's where I would be. But if I were really worried about this pulling back and protecting the profit, probably just going to take the profit. But these are stock like stocks like this. If I want to hold them, stop loss stays here. I sell out of the money cover calls to protect the position. Okay. Um, Disney, Disney trap short to the 200 SMA certainly is possible. One thing that makes me a little bit uncomfortable with Disney is that we have slipped out from underneath uh, underneath this downtrend. Now it could be an acknowledgement of this area here. And you can see how that parallel line comes right in here where we could see that short. Now there's, there's a caution that I wanna give you on this. If you look back across here, that's a pretty substantial level of price support in the chart. One of the big mistakes I've made in my trading, um, I don't know if you've ever had this experience before, is put my entry short into a trade right underneath here. The stock falls, trips me into the short, reverses and hammers, and then takes off from there. The upside. So the fact that it slipped out from under this consistent trend gives me a little bit of concern, and it does give me a little concern because we're setting on pretty substantial area of price support right here. Could go just a little bit lower to finish filling that gap. And that would be right down into there. And then reverse and bounce right off of that. So think carefully about that trade if that's really the one that you want um, for the short. It is set up in the trap trade for the short. But consider the risk of that to that stop. If we bounce down into here in reverse, it could be a real painful experience. That's, uh, by the way, the biggest mistake I made over and over and over in short trading, trying to short right at support. Same thing, trying to go long right at resistance and not recognizing it and then getting punished for it. Okay. Uh, Jay, you must have missed. Um, we've already done CAVA. Um, I'll do it really quick here again. CAVA is a bullish trade holding in support. It's got this little downtrend that's going on in here, but we've got a good support, a good trend. I'd be watching this closely. Stop loss, if you get in it, it's got to be underneath this consolidating move. A day or two more rest might give us that decision whether we're going to push on out or if we have a bad day tomorrow in the markets, we could reverse right here. Um, let's see. Meta. Meta, right at price resistance. Um, been following trend. We're already pushed up here pretty far pushing right into this price resistance in the chart. Um, would not be my favorite entry point. My stop loss on this trade would have to be in under here, so I would have wanted my entry in here someplace on that trade. Um, stretching on up into here, we could find that resistance and, 
and pull back a little bit. So I think this is a, a trade that you got to wait for just a little bit. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see this consolidate and rest. If it does stretch on through, just let it happen. Let it stretch on through and then look for your entry when it pulls back and gives you the lower risk entry into the trade. Make sense, Bob? <clears throat> Netflix. By the way, can you guys see, um, I look at charts um, like, um, Ed, Ed has used this as an analogy and I'm gonna steal this tonight, but I look at charts the way I would be looking at it if I was a loan officer trying to loan you money at a bank. What's the chances I'm gonna get my money back on this? And I don't look at it through the lens, I wanna be a buyer of this, I wanna be a seller of this. I look at it to see what the chart says. And I'm willing to live with what the chart says. Okay, try to put no bias into the evaluation of the trade. Right now, NVIDIA, there's your upside trend right there. Nice 3.8 trap long setting up. This is the trap long setup here. Morning star pattern. Very, very bullish. We know big tech has been pretty darn strong here. The big question is, can we this time pop through that resistance? Um, right now, we show no signs of weakening here. So I think the odds are it will go higher unless something bad happens tomorrow. Data. So um, if you're in it, um, I would want my stop loss underneath that red line. I would wait for the trade to potentially fill in this area and then move on up. Marvel. Marvel gives me um, a little bit of a concern here. Um, I see this chart um, struggling. We have a shoulder here, possible head here, and we may be rallying back to another shoulder. We could reach that right in this area of the chart. Um, if you're looking at this for a long trade, Jose, um, I think this, this has broken its trend. I don't have to think that. It's broken its upside trend. And now it's trying to rally back here a little bit. There is a little saving grace in here in the fact that we've got just a tiny little higher low here. Okay, but I would be watching this carefully. This is a big area of price resistance here with all of these attempts. Here we tried to hold and failed it. A rally back up to here in, in here at any place, I would be looking for the potential failure. Three is crossed underneath the eight. We haven't even made that crossover up yet. That means momentum for the upside move is lacking here. So as we approach that resistance again, watch for that potential failure in that trade. I honestly, if, if I were looking to trade Marvel, I would be watching this closer for the short right now until it can do something like this break out of there and hold show me that trend till then i'm going to be thinking short uber there's that downtrend break right there nice little trend break moving up pulling back holding in there bullish candle setting up on that trade take a look at this long term trend in here hey that can be really good for us right here or it could be um, a little bit bad meaning that we might need to consolidate this move a little bit more i would have no qualms of being long this right now as long as you can hold your stop loss to underneath the tail of that big candle there hold that trade because this may have to spend a little bit more time in consolidation the reason I say that guys is trends this steep 
don't tend to last very long. So watch carefully. I'd actually prefer it if it built more support underneath that. But it's a nice chart. It's a bullish chart. Could easily have upside potential in it. Uh, Google. Google had a nice day today. Nice little trap long setting up in here. Um, the big question you've got is will it break out? And tomorrow could be a really big day. Tech has been really strong. One thing I would tell you, the long side trend in this, Long term trend is all the way out here, and this has gotten really steep, very parabolic. Doesn't mean it can't keep going parabolic, but watch those resistance areas carefully in that chart. So let me let me lay this out. If I were buying this trade, this is exactly how I'd look at it. If I were going to buy this trade, break through that resistance. There's my entry. So I'm entering here. My stop has to be under here. And if that's an acceptable trade, I'm willing to do it because there's blue sky above. There's nothing out here restricting that to go in any, you know, if it can break through, you've got a good potential trade. Now, the other way to look at this is look at this and say, okay, Google, prove it to me. Break through then hold and look for your entry because I can buy the stock almost at exactly the same price. So it all comes down to your tolerance for risk. What is your tolerance for risk? Is that an acceptable area to enter the trade? I'm buying it here or I'm buying it here. So I'm almost buying it at the same place but I may have a little bit more probability above here because I don't have that additional resistance. So something to think about in the chart. Uh, Gary, your thanks, Daryl. You're welcome. Uh, PLTR. PLTR, trap long. Beautiful looking move in here. The only, um, everything in here looks really copacetic. We were looking at this today in uh, Brightway Options. The only um, thing that I would caution you on is this is the trend, and tomorrow is a big day. Um, so if if this has to consolidate over here or come back a little bit to find that trend before it goes, don't be too surprised. If you're in it, stops underneath here. Be patient for that to finish up this pattern in here and look for the trend. It, it is possible that this is changing its trend trajectory and it's getting steeper. But I will tell you, steep trends like that just don't tend to last very long. Kind of run out of energy fast. So a little bit more consolidation in here actually builds a better case on the trade. But I like it. I think it's a doable trade. Uh, for sure, and if you're long that, congrats, um, ride that ride that horse. <clears throat> Apple. After this big move today, clean to a clean chart here. Um, the support in Apple is here now. So all-time high breakout, that's the only place that it, it has support at the moment. So it would be a very high-risk trade to enter this. If you're not already in it, I would wait. Your trend here is here. Could rest, consolidate, come all the way back into that trend. If you're already long it, congrats. I'd be thinking about grabbing some gains on a move like this. This is a very extraordinary move for Apple. Um, sell covered calls against it, close part of the trade. Do something to manage that position and take profits out of it. Because I really, you got to be careful with a move like that. It can take it all back really fast.
spy resistance um we really we got blue sky above um the only way i could really determine some resistance in the spy is by using fibonacci because there's there's no resistance up there um it's all blue sky so i would do something like this i go to the weekly chart here i take my swing low here up to this swing high right in here and then i jump back to the daily chart Here's my next resistance I've got that about five what is that um, about 540 539 85 is what that says but up there around 540 would be the next resistance and that's all the it's all you can it's blue sky up there it could go could go to the moon you don't know okay other than that, the resistance that we have into the chart is today's high. All time highs, there's your resistance. That's all we've got to work with at the moment for upside resistance. Okay. You could attempt to build a channel in here and um, try to find an upside resistance by utilizing that. could utilize it here okay but you got blue sky above so if you're holding it long um, anything is possible think about it tomorrow if the data is good would anybody be surprised if the spy is up 150 points tomorrow if the data is good for the market and blow through that so quite quick it um I do no I don't trade them at all um carry but um let's see you're asking J hook hook short yeah the J hook the short was up here on the failure so now we're three days into the short taking out this support at the moment the next support that I would see down here would be right about in there I would say if you're short this may have a little bit more time to go down I wouldn't be taking it short here too late to be short if you ask me stop loss needs to be above this high that would be my opinion I would wait for the next entry short um, look for a support level down in there if it fails through there and you're short you're golden breaking down in through here then I would say it comes all the way back down into this range Uh, VST VST I see a potential of a head and shoulders top we um, broke the upside trend shoulder head we're coming up here to possibly another shoulder we've got resistance in the chart between here and here and that's where I would be watching for that potential failure now I don't know if you're thinking in this long or short you didn't tell me that but this range right in here is where I would be watching carefully for that. This is one of those trades where the three's trying to cross back up, but we're still not there. We don't have that good, strong, bullish momentum here in the trade. And we could not be at all surprised if this runs out of gas and fails in this range. Okay, so I would be looking short on that, Carol, until it does something like this. And again, cross up, hold a higher low, cross up, hold a higher low, then I'm looking long.
And by the way, guys, what I'm doing here is I'm looking at charts, um, you know, for the terms of probability of a win. I don't like to predict stocks. I, in fact, I hate it. In, in, in fact, I think it's, it is the worst disease we have in this market right now is hype and prediction. And it, it's costing people so much money with all of this predicting everything. Nobody knows the future. And particularly with data like we have coming tomorrow, anything is possible. Okay, so make the chart show you where it wants to go. Stop trying to predict where it's going to go. Make it prove to you where it's going to go. Show me that higher low to actually resume an uptrend because no one would be surprised if this fails and that's the downtrend. Beginning. Um, let's see, Reddit, Reddit's a tough one because there's not a lot of data <clears throat> on it, but right now this is a trap long setup here in the trade. We're coming very near to trend. We've got a good price support under here. So I would have to say, yes, this is a bullish potential entry. Could take another day or two in here. You want to keep in mind getting above this is going to be key and seeing if we can hold above that. That's going to be key. But right now, this is a beautiful trap long setup in that trade. Stop loss would be underneath these tails down in here someplace. Whoops. Tool. There we go. Down in here someplace. Just don't be surprised if it needs just a little more rest in here. <clears throat> nice chart. Um, let's see. Oh, nice, Mel. Congrats. Uh, Trader X, D A L. Um, DAL is in a short. Um, we've created a lower high, and you did mention that you want to be short. Let's um, go to a, a naked chart here, get rid of all of that stuff. But there's your resistance in the chart right there, and there's your downtrend in the chart. So we are in a potential short in this trade. And what I would suggest um, right now, price action wise, look for a little bit of support right there. If that support fails, you'll be in good shape on that trade. Now, dropping all the way to the 200-day moving average, I don't see that right now. Um, if you want a longer-term trade, I think you got to go to a longer-term chart. And right now, we don't have a failure pattern on a longer-term chart. We just have a pullback. Matter of fact, if you'll notice right in here, all we have is a pullback to trend on the longer term. Now, for me to say that we're going to start moving down toward the 200, first we need to break this area here. Break down here, we'll rally back, and then we start looking for that failure underneath the 50-day moving average. Okay. We drop through it, we move down, we rally back, and then we catch that here. That's the blue ice failure pattern that I would be looking for that move down toward the 200, but I would never say it's going to just go there because we've got all of this support in here. Okay, My first target, even with a blue ice failure, would be down in here. And then we'd have to see from there, how does it deal with this support before we start looking at the 200A? Okay. And I would really caution you on that longer term. If you want this to be a longer term, you're showing a daily chart. This longer term 
has not made a failure pattern yet. This is just a pullback to trend. So rally back and show me a failure, consolidate out, show me a failure. Now I've got a short for the longer term. Hope you guys are finding this helpful and useful. Um, very nice, Kev. Awesome. Uh, BATO. BATO took a kind of a nasty turn here today, gapping lower. Clearly, this is our downtrend in the chart. And this resistance, get into a habit there. This resistance right here proved to be a failure. There's your 3-8 trap short. Now we've gapped away. Fortunately, when we do something like that and we gap away, you can see we're catching a bounce right in here. All right, so would I want to be short on this? Not yet. I would need this to bounce back or consolidate something, come out closer, rally back up into here, consolidate over, and then look for that next potential short. Um, in that trade, I wouldn't want to chase it with a gap like that, just in case it happens to just really bounce back up. Do I want it long? Not at all. QQQ. Um, here's your long-term trend in QQQ. Now, you notice I ignored this. This is where we get the most touches in that trend so we are stretched away this trend right in here is very steep so I agree with you we're pretty strung out here at the moment but you also have to admit this is a very very bullish pattern right here because we consolidated right above that support pushed on higher okay so I don't want to make an assumption that it, just because it's high that it has to come down um try not to do that um i think it i think it is overbought and and i think it's i think it's so thin right now because we only have a few tech companies pushing it up um it's really thin and if those companies were to stumble tomorrow maybe this could come down hard but for now, it's a bullish chart, and that's the only way I can see it is a bullish chart. Trend is up, and if I were in it, I would be very happy holding stop loss to here, just waiting to see where this could go. Blue sky above, be looking to take some profits, probably before I pulled back, because we are very, very bullish here. Carol, example of good data tomorrow. Well, good data is going to be something like the CPI um, comes in better than expected. So we've got a CPI uh, number here tomorrow. They're expecting this to be a 0.1% um, increase in month over month CPI. If this comes in less than that, that's good news. Okay, because it's showing that the consumer prices are, are diminishing. Right now they're expecting this to be at 3.4. If it comes in less than that, that's good news. Okay, we've got the year over year, and this will be your headline number. They're expecting that to come in um, one-tenth below last time. The market could treat that as some good news. If it misses that number, and goes higher, bad news. If it comes in well under that, really good news for the market. Okay, means 
the Fed, the restriction that the Fed has put on our rates is having the, the, the effect that they're expecting, and that is the slowing of the economy. Slow it down, take the heat out of it, and it starts to reduce. Numbers we've seen lately haven't been proving that out just yet, and that's making the Fed probably a little bit uncomfortable. Here we are in an election cycle. They want to cut rates really bad, but we haven't been getting the numbers to support that. Okay, so I don't know if that made sense, Carol, but um, we could get really excited if those numbers are better than these numbers. Okay, lower number. Higher numbers, not good. Okay. Now remember, what Ed said there is true. It's how the market reacts to the data. And you never know how they're going to react to the data. Um, I would look for whipsaws tomorrow. Okay. Um, we could start one direction and completely whipsaw it because of the emotion in the market. And remember, we no more than get through the CPI information, and we're going to be thinking about, okay, now what's the Fed going to do? Okay. Daryl, thank you. FIS on a weekly. Beautiful upside trend, beautiful chart. Could be setting up your next trap long in here. Nice upside trend, good support. Um, I would be looking for a buy signal to occur in there, possibly any time. Um, next, you got a little bit of resistance um, right here to be concerned about for that next move to the upside, somewhere between here and here. But that's plenty to make some good money on it, being a nice profit on that trade. So yeah, really nice looking chart. Every reason to believe that it'll perform just like it did, you know, in here, holding that trend here. I'll rest it over here, see if we can move on up. Uh, thanks, Mara. Thanks, Carmen. Um, Kev, thank you. I appreciate that a lot. I'm glad this is helpful. Um, you know, I do find sometimes when you when you do something that's relevant, directly relevant to what people are looking at, um, it helps a lot. Yeah, I know it helped me a lot to see how my mentor would lay out a chart and I go, oh man, how did I miss that again? You know, um, how did I miss that again? Um, XLF, this failure in here on XLF, um, once again, this pullback in here looks good at the moment, but we're right here a little bit of price support and notice that we did catch a little bit of a bounce here so don't be real surprised if this has to consolidate or or bounce back up a little bit more kind of filling out that um that um, um triangle pattern but if it does continue to fall then your next support level well obviously is right down here stands out into here and beyond that point, your next support level comes down into here. We've got moving averages in here also in play. That potential failure here at the 50 day. So we need to make this progression back down. Um, just like we progress back up, we'll look for those areas of support and we'll try to deal with them um, up and down bounces. But right now, um it's certainly short if you're short it congrats it's a beautiful chart at the moment for a short um i i would say um tomorrow's data could have a significant impact on this so be prepared for that for tomorrow <clears throat> um intel you're welcome mike 
Intel right now is stuck. Stuck in the mud. We've got a pretty good support level in here trying to hold this chart. But I've got no real pattern in here to buy. It did break this short term, you know, this really steep downtrend by slipping out from under it. But I don't have any higher low in here to trade that shows me that it's beginning an uptrend. Okay, when we sink this hard in a stock, uh, bottoms can be a really long process, a lot longer than most people want to be patient for them. Um, take for example on this big fall, this was a really volatile area down here, but look how long it took to work out that bottom before that first higher low came in. And that higher low is where the trend began. All of this is chalk. So wait for the higher low. Okay. Don't try to predict this because it could easily fall off of this cliff and come right on down into here. Okay. Make it hold a higher low. Push up, hold a higher low, and then you've got an upside trend to work with. You know, the way I like to explain this um, <clears throat> to folks is institutions, institutions have 80 plus percent of all the money in the market. They're in pension plans, 401k, state pensions, all of these different things. 80 plus percent of the market is controlled by the institutions. It should never be retail traders trying to predict where the bottom of this is. That's for the institutions to do. And they'll never make that easy for you. Okay? Make them prove to you, just like they did over here. Be patient and wait for the higher low. And then the trend begins. Be patient and wait for the higher low to show. Let the institutions do their job. Intel will not trend because Jose and Doug and Mel and Kev buy this. It will trend only when institutions start supporting the stock. too big a company it cannot trend from retail trading it needs institutions okay Tesla <clears throat> Tesla's been struggling in this consolidating zone here and now if we look kind of close, might be a little bit too close of a look, but you can see there's that little teeny tiny trend. And then we kind of slipped past it right here and failed right there at that area of resistance, pushing lower and breaking this area of support. But you know, Tesla is one of those weird companies. Um, Elon could come out with some statement tomorrow and change it. Right now, I would say this is short. You're in a good short if you like it um, of the tr for the trade. Um, I would put, um, I need to break this area here and then I'd be looking for a target down here as the next area of support, okay, in the chart. Now, if you got a 50-day moving average failure here, I just, I've got no other major moving averages down here. Everything is above. The 500 is above. The 200 is above. All I've got is price action here to work with. So price action is where I would be looking a failure on down. There's your next support area in the chart. That would be the next target I'd be watching for. Okay. Now with this trend the way it is, it's a very shallow downtrend. Data tomorrow, volatility that we're going to have out of this data tomorrow. Don't be at all surprised if we bounce around in here some more. But as long as we don't break that downtrend in this resistance, I would stick short on that trade.
Ah, uh, you're very welcome, Mel. <clears throat> Kev, yeah, if those data points, I'm, I'm guessing that's what you're talking about. If the CPI numbers are higher than these numbers, the market's not going to like it. Because what it's going to do is it's going to give the ammunition to the Fed to say, we're not cutting rates. See, what the market has been trying to do for so long, for about 18 months now, is tell the Fed what they're supposed to do. They have been trying to predict and predict and predict that there's going to be a turn here in the market. Well, it hasn't happened yet, and they have been wrong for 18 months. <clears throat> okay. All we can do is wait. If these numbers come in hot, and, and why, why would they come in hot? Well, you guys saw the jobs, right? You see what's happening in wages. You see the debt that we're mounting because we're spending too much in um, the federal government. We could continue. It's, it's certainly possible, even with a 5% rate, that we could see this go back up. Okay, so the question is, is the data, is the interest rate restrictive enough to actually continue to move this lower? If those numbers go higher, that's gonna give, um, that's gonna be a problem for the Fed, particularly in election year. Okay, so that would be bad data for the market. Now, I can't say the market's going to react negatively to it if it does go higher, but that's bad data, and, and we give the Fed every reason to say no rate cuts. That's not what the market wants to hear. Okay. Tridex, yes, on your channel that you've got there drawn, and definitely within that channel, everything is bullish there on the queues at the moment. There's nothing in there on the queues that says bearish at the moment. The only thing that really concerns me with the NASDAQ is how thin it is. When, here, let me, let me show you a heat map of... Um, If it wasn't for these giant companies, look at how many were red. And they've continued to be red. We've got more stocks going down than we do going up in the NASDAQ. It's just that the, those, those stocks are so massive, they're able to continue to move it up. So I guess the question becomes, what happens if those big tech giants stumble? Because if we look at our data points, T2108, the percentage of stocks above the 40-day moving average is only 35, about 36% at the close of today. Going down, 36% of the stocks are holding above their 40-day moving average. That's not good. T2107, 51.74% of the stocks are holding above their 200-day. So right now, holding above their 200-day, we've got just over half the stocks. More stocks are in decline than going up. T2122, T2122, the four-week new high, new low ratio, this is stocks making new highs, stocks making new lows. The new lows are winning. So it really all depends on how much strength those big techs, how much money can they continue to draw in. Because they're doing the job by themselves right now.
Uh, you're welcome, guys. You're welcome, Mel. You're welcome, Ricky. Thank you much. KRE is weak. Um, Moody's came out, downgraded some banks. There is some worry that there are some banks that could potentially, um, regional banks that could potentially fail. There's probably more on that list that's in trouble. Um, right now we have, um, right here in this chart, you can see a substantial head and shoulders. We've broken the neckline of that head and shoulders and we're already back down here testing this area of support. Now, because we're extended away right now from this downtrend move, don't be surprised if we don't bounce up, but I would be watching for that next potential short. We come up here, look at all that resistance right there in the chart. I'd be watching that carefully for a failure in here for more short on the regionals. They're in real trouble. That's it's not improving at the moment. Thank you, Ed. I'm gonna have to tap out here pretty soon as well. Um, Uh, Kev, there will be, a, this is recorded. Um, I will render this and try to get it loaded up as soon as I can so you guys can watch this again. But I hope, hope this was helpful for you guys, um, that potential. Uh, and can be helpful in the way you look at charts and the way you um, view them. Remember, every time you sit down to look at a chart, Try to remove yourself from this idea that I'm, I'm here just to get a buy or I'm here just to get a sell. Really look at the chart for what it is, not for what you want it to be. You'll get a better read on the chart. And do yourself a favor. Don't just look at the hard right edge. Look at the chart. How many times did you see me pull this back or mention big areas of support or resistance in the chart? Look at the chart. The chart is trying to give us clues if we look at it, if we look for it, okay? Uh, Trader X on Tesla, what you've got drawn there, that inverted head and shoulders pattern, certainly is a possibility, but before it can do that, we got to break above that neckline that you've got drawn in there. Right now, it's not showing us that. It's showing us the possibility that we could fail on lower or breaking some of those support levels. Okay? So remember, patterns like head and shoulders, they fail. Just like any other pattern, just because you see a pattern doesn't mean it's set in stone that it's going to work. Okay? Market conditions will dictate that. Ah, uh, Bob, yeah, we did PLTR already um, really quickly. PLTR, very, very bullish chart. Um, so the way I've got it drawn up. The only the only concern I have in here is this, this move is a little bit before the trend. But every reason to believe if you put your trade in, your stop loss is underneath there, as long as you're willing to hold that. Just don't be surprised with the data that we've got coming in here. There'd be some volatility and maybe even a pullback or consolidation to come back to that trend before it goes. But other than that, if you're if you're long it, I'd stay long it. Um, um, and and if you're not in it, maybe be patient for this data to come out, see how this plays out, and look for your entry then. Okay. Price action stuff is one of my favorite things, and <clears throat> it's one of those things that I never get tired of talking about because I worked so hard to learn to read charts, and, and I only want to trade charts that give me an edge. And there is a difference there. The way I look at a chart is, is this chart giving me an edge for a winning trade. I don't trade a stock just because I like the ticker. I don't trade a trade that is um, doesn't give me a low risk entry. Okay. I didn't come to the market to gamble. I came to the market to make money. 
and I want to do it with high probability trades. I don't want to predict it. I want to follow it. You notice what I showed you over and over and over again. Make it hold the higher lows for a long trade. Make it hold a lower high for a short trade. I want to follow the trade along the trend with the aid of support and resistance and that trend to improve the odds of winning. Okay. Um, Kev, the, the best would be the 3A trap class that I teach. There's a there's a class, um, a replay class that you can get on the website of the 3A trap. Um, but any of the free videos out there on YouTube um, are probably equally as good. I don't know that one's better than another. Um, but if you want the full rules and everything um, to, to use the 3A trap, um, you'll want that class to get all the detail, all the rules of the setup. Um, AMD, last one. AMD is a little bit of a concern at the moment. We did fail this support today, but we bounced and rallied back up to try and hold on to it. Um, the concern for me at this point is we are reacting right now. See all this resistance over here? Right in here. We're struggling with that right here. We've given up our trend. We've gone past our trend. So I'm seeing the momentum for the long side fade out of this. This needs some kind of inspiration to bring it back. Um, could happen tomorrow in the data. Could also be the data tomorrow that finally drives us on through downside here in AMD. So I do have a little bit of a concern on it. You know, if you take this to a weekly chart, how many of you on the weekly chart see a head and shoulders pattern? Uh, Kev, just go to the contact page of the website. You can send emails there. Yep, just go to the contact page of the website. Okay. So be kind of careful with it. It it needs it needs some life. It it needs some CPR right now to get some enthusiasm going. We may get that in the data tomorrow. I don't know. Okay. Um, we may get some love first thing in the morning on tech because of Oracle. Oracle reported well tonight. That may help AMD. But it, I think it's going to be how we react to the CPI tomorrow and then what the FOMC does, how this market's going to perform. Okay. Mm -hmm. So be careful. All right, guys. I want to wish you all a fantastic evening. Get some rest. We'll be back at this tomorrow. It's going to be a wild and crazy day in the market with um, these data points. We'll see how the market reacts, and then there might be some really good trading for us. Um, be patient. Wait for those trades to come to you. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Y'all take care. We'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning for the morning market prep. Wish you all the best. Thanks, everyone.